Is there something you can do to make your life better? The things that we get upset about do not fix our problems. The world is not going to change. We need to change our approach. On today's Enjoying Everyday Life. Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life, and once again, thank you for joining us. It does mean a lot to me that you're willing to spend time letting me share the Word of God with you. Today, we want to talk to you about, very simply, calming down and cheering up. And both of those are things that the Bible tells us that we should do. I want to encourage you to open up your hearts, have a spirit of faith, and receive from this lesson today that I taught in Jacksonville, Florida. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, beginning there and going through verse 30, are just such comforting scriptures. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. The Amplified Bible says, I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Now, I want you to notice that he didn't say, I'll refresh your body. He said, I'll refresh your soul. It's not that we don't need physical rest because we most certainly do need physical rest. But to be honest with you, you can rest physically and never rest your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotion. You can lay down and yet your mind just keeps going. You can lay down and yet you can still be very upset. Matter of fact, some people use the night time when they lay down for their worrying. You don't get a right rest when you do that. Jesus said, look, if you're upset about something, come to me. If you have a problem, you don't know what to do, come to me. If you have a child that's in trouble, come to me. If you have any kind of a burden, come to me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. Now, your soul is your inner life. And let's read that again. He said, if you come to me, you'll find something for your inner life. You'll find relief, (laughs) ease, refreshment and recreation. Kind of sounds like he's saying that our souls need a vacation. You know, you can take your body on vacation and still yet not get a vacation for your soul. We all really have two lives. We have an outer life and an inner life. And I've really come to realize over the last number of years that my inner life really is more important to God than my outer life. And my inner life needs a rest. My inner life needs a vacation. My emotions need a vacation. My mind needs a vacation. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good. It's not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing. But it's comfortable, gracious, and pleasant, and my burden is light and easy to be borne. What I want to talk to you tonight about is changing your approach to life. We all have a way that we approach life. Now, some people, just by virtue of their personality, are rather easygoing. And I bless you in Jesus' name if you're one of those people. And I wish many times that I could have a personality transplant but this is what I got. I'm one of those. (laughs) Got a problem? (laughs) What? And like most people do, I married a... (laughs) Dave has one sermon that he preaches to everybody and it's cast your care. 
And he has one scripture that's the answer to every problem, and that is Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. <laughs> Anytime you go to Dave with any kind of a problem, I don't care what kind of a problem it is, if it's a people problem, a financial problem, if you're sick, if you're upset, if you're worried, he has one or two scriptures he gives you. 1 Peter 5, Romans 8. Cast your care on God, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Casting your care joys is humbling yourself. You can't do anything about the problem. Cast your care on God. Don't worry. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to the word. But I'm upset. <laughs> well, it won't do you any good. <laughs> now, I don't really know what to say to those of you tonight that are like Dave. I'm not sure what you're going to get out of my message. Because probably the truth of the matter is you don't even need it. But there is a bunch of us who do, and so you're just going to have to kind of endure with the rest of us while we get a little help here tonight. Amen? How many of you are a little more on the edge? You're Okay, so good. God brought out all the upset people for me to preach to. We need an inner rest, not necessarily an outer rest. We certainly do need an outer rest, and we know that without it, we'll become weak and unable to do even simple daily chores. But we can also become worn out inwardly from too much activity, too many thoughts, too many decisions, too much talking, I have found out that when I get in a situation where I have to talk all day long, I am absolutely exhausted at the end of the day, and it has nothing to do with my physical being. You can just get worn out from talking too much. Sometimes it would do some of us good just to go somewhere and zip our lip for about five days. Too much multitasking, one of the things that we desperately need to learn how to do is to do one thing at a time. Do you know that we do a lot of things, we're not even aware we're doing them. Because while we're doing this thing, we're already planning the next thing. We're already thinking about the next thing. I am more tired mentally and emotionally when evening comes than I am physically. Worry, fear, wears us out inside. Excessive concern over what people think about you and about what you're doing will just wear you out. Being insecure will wear you out. <laughs> Amen? I don't get nearly as tired doing one of my conferences if I don't get frazzled over every little detail that doesn't go right. If I don't worry about what people think of me. If I don't get upset because half the lamps in my hotel room don't have any bulbs at work. <laughs> or the stopper in the bathtub won't stay in and I can't take a bath and I love to take baths. I don't want a shower, I want a bath. But if the stopper won't hold the water in the tub, then I can't have my bath. And I don't like it when I can't have my bath. Amen. When I can manage to stay calm, no matter what goes on in my life, boy, do I conserve a lot of energy. And many of you that are sick are not sick because you have anything physically wrong with you. You're sick because you never shut down inside. And you're sick because all, you've spent all your life getting upset and trying to calm down. About the time you calm down, you get upset again, then you try to calm down. Then you get mad, and then you try to get over it. And then you get mad, and then you try to get over it. And then you get offended, and you try to get over it. And then you get mad at somebody, you've got to work a week to forgive them. And it's just this endless cycle of upset, 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 upset. Well, you ought to clap, because I'm telling you the truth tonight, amen? Here's my revelation tonight. The world is not going to change. And the devil's not going to change. 
and all the people in your life probably won't change. And even if they do and they become real nice, there will be some others planted in your life that aren't so nice. <laughs> so here's my revelation. The world's not going to change. The devil's not going to change. People are not going to change. So I've decided to change. I don't remember now how many years ago it was, but several years ago, I got jealous of my husband's peace. And that's not a bad thing. I saw me driving myself crazy and having all these physical problems, running to the doctor all the time, and being worn out all the time. Dave felt good every day. Dave was happy every day. And you know, we in the same family, we're in the same house, we got the same kids. We have the same problems, the same situations, the same things to deal with. But yet he just stayed happy and I stayed upset. I worried and he'd cast his care. <laughs> Amen? And I finally decided one day, you know what? There's another way to live besides the way I'm living. And I'm going to find out how to have peace. Now I want to tell you something about peace. You won't have peace if you don't have it on purpose. Do you hear me? You're not going to have peace if you don't have it on purpose. I'll tell you why. Because there is a thief loose in the earth, and his name is Satan. And he is a peace stealer. And the devil sets you up to get you upset. You want to do an interesting project, keep a list for the next 30 days. Just keep a little list for the next 30 days. Like every morning when you pray or something, just kind of write down the things you can remember from yesterday that had a tendency or were being used by the devil to upset you. You lost your car keys. You're on your way out the door and the phone rang and you couldn't decide whether you wanted to go back and answer it or not. And finally, you did decide to go back and because you were hurrying, you hit your knee on the door and you <laughs> got a bruise and stubbed your toe and tore half your toenail off. And then by the time you got back to the phone, whoever it was had hung up. <laughs> or you got in a traffic jam that you weren't expecting. <clears throat> Amen? Yeah. Somebody got the promotion at work that you wanted. Your electric bill was higher this month than you thought it should be. And when you tried to call the electric company to find out something about it, you were hanging on the phone for one hour <laughs> listening to their recorded messages. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. An endless cycle of stuff. Stuff happens. Amen? The devil sets us up to get us upset. Let's remember that Jesus did not tell Martha that she worked too much. He told Martha that she worried too much. We think we work too much, but I'll tell you the truth. I think we have a capacity from God to work and bear a lot of good fruit. It's obvious in the Bible that we're supposed to work. You work six days, you rest one. Work is good. We're built for accomplishment and to produce something. Matter of fact, I get tired or physically laying around doing nothing than if I'm doing something. Being lazy just wears me out. So he didn't tell Martha that she was working too much. He said, you're worrying too much. And what was she worried about? Jesus had come to her house. And she was all upset. The house wasn't clean enough. The dinner might not get done on time. This was a problem. That was a problem. Pick this up. Pick that up. Straighten this up. Straighten that up. My goodness. What will Jesus think? Mary, on the other hand, just went and sat down in front of Jesus and wanted to rest in his presence. Thank God that we not only all have a Martha, but we've got a Mary in us somewhere if we can just find her. Amen. And then Martha did what we all do so often because she was upset. She blamed Mary for her problem. 
Come on now. Because she was upset, because something was going on in her life that she did not like, she blamed Mary for her problem. And how many times when we can't find the car keys is it somebody else's fault? How many times when we're late is it somebody else's fault? And so not only does the devil succeed in upsetting us, but then he gets us into strife with somebody else. You say, well, what's the answer to all these things? Calm down and cheer up. Go to Psalm 94, verse 12. You say, how long am I going to have something happening every day that steals my peace? <laughs> have you ever wondered, how long? Can't I ever have a day that goes just right? I went to a place last week where I go to write. You know, writing is, takes a lot out of you. It's pretty intense. And so there's one restaurant in this little town where I was at that actually about a 45-minute round trip for me to go to. And it's the only restaurant in town that sells Starbucks coffee, which I love. Amen. And uh, so I waited till I really wanted a cup of coffee, really bad. I'd worked several hours. I had my plan. The restaurant closed at 3.30. I'm going to leave a quarter after 2. I'm going to get there about 10 to 3, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to have my coffee, and I'm going to eat a little bite, and then I'll go back, and I'll finish my book. Well, I drove in, I sat down. The lady said, they know me. She said, you want your usual? And I said, yes. She came back and said, ah, oh, I forgot to tell you, the machine's broke. No coffee today. I said, okay, praise the Lord. Bless you, I'll see you the next time. <laughs> well, you know what? There would have been a time when I would have gotten really upset about that. It's not going to do any good. It's not going to fix the coffee machine. The things that we get upset about don't fix our problems. Is anybody home out there in those seats tonight? The things that we get upset about do not fix our problems. The world is not going to change. We need to change our approach. You know what a spiritually mature person is? I'm going to paint you a picture of a spiritually mature person. A spiritually mature person is someone who can remain calm no matter what is going on. Amen? Amen. Come on, I'm going to say it again. A spiritually mature person is someone who can remain calm no matter what's going on. If you study the word emotions, it has an interesting definition. It actually says to rise up and move out. Now think about that. Our emotions rise up and then they want to do something. And what we have to learn to do is stop following them. <laughs> One man said to me, a couple of years ago when I was trying to teach him these principles, he was a very emotional sort of a guy that was always getting in trouble because of his emotions. And he said, so really what I need to do is when my emotions take off in a direction, I need to not get on board. <laughs> I said, that's exactly right. Look at me and let me tell you something. You're always going to have a variety of emotions. Your emotions are not going to disappear and go away. When things don't go your way, you may always feel initially upset. But what happens when you get on board with those emotions is you started out maybe a little bit disappointed, but the more you talk about it and the more you react to it, the more upset you get. And pretty soon now you're in a full-fledged fit over some little thing that really didn't even make that much difference. Amen. We get ourselves upset. 
Psalm 94, 12 and 13, Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man whom you discipline and instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. So we're blessed when God disciplines us and when he chastises us and when he instructs us. We don't think so, but we are. Now verse 13 tells us why God disciplines us. That you may give that man power to keep himself calm in the days of adversity. Who's going to keep you calm? Yourself is going to keep you calm. That God may give him power to keep himself calm. Everybody say out loud, I need to keep myself calm. I need to keep myself calm. Say, when my emotions take off, I need to not get on board. That you may give him the power to keep himself calm until the inevitable pit is dug for the wicked. The Lord basically requires one thing of us, namely that in the midst of whatever circumstance, we are not touched by it. We, we have to stop letting all these things in the world bother us and upset us and just stay calm. If you don't stay calm, you can't hear from God. If you don't stay calm, you're not going to operate in wisdom. When people get upset, they do all kinds of foolish things that only make their problem a lot worse. When you're upset, it is not the time to make a decision. You don't make a decision when you're emotional, you calm down. You don't make a decision to buy something when you're emotional because what will happen is your emotions will get all excited about having the shiny new thing and your emotions will just make you feel like it is the best thing that you have ever had in your whole life and it will change your life and you will love it forever but your emotions are not talking to you about paying for it. And here's the thing that we have to remember. Those emotions that go, wow! Tomorrow won't be there. So we have to make sure that what we do, that we're going to be happy with. Amen? When you feel really emotional and you're getting ready to buy something because you're all hyped up, the best thing in the world that you can do especially if you're not sure that you can afford it. Especially if you're going to have to d go in debt to get it. Especially if you have to lay plastic on the counter to buy it. What you need to do is just say, you know what? I'm going to think about this a little bit. And if I want it, I'll come back. I realize that many of you may be wondering, well, Joyce, how in the world can I enjoy every single day of my life with the situation that I'm in? I know that you may have questions. Well, on Friday, I'm going to be answering some of the questions that people ask about how they could possibly enjoy their life in the circumstances they're in. So make sure that you're with us because I believe it's going to be a day of answers. You mean more to us at Joyce Meyer Ministries than you may ever know. We appreciate you, and we thank our friends and partners for making this worldwide ministry possible. Together, we're feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, and presenting the gospel to the nations. Please contact us or visit JoyceMeyer.org today to share your prayer requests, find out more about our resources, see Joyce's conference schedule, and to join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe.